Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays F XCOM 2 and once again I'm doing another of the historical challenge missions. These are the ones that came out as daily challenges when the game was first released and they're all sort of odd matchups. So in this case I have a set of aliens here who are under my control. I've got a couple of sectoids, I've got a muton, uh, I've got one of the vipers, a faceless and a codex which will all, all have some various interesting powers. The, uh, the sectoids have psi reanimation so we can bring back humanoid uh, corpses as zombies, could be useful, and a mind spin which allows you to sort of vaguely poke at enemies in the hope that but, um, you'll, you'll, you'll make them panic or something. Uh, the mutant has a gun and um, a gun grenade and a, a stabby bayonet on the front of the gun. So the mutons are great if you get if you can get anyone to do a melee attack against them because they'll automatically get a free ta attack in return. So that's quite nice. And they've got loads of armor as well, which keeps them keeps them a little bit safe. The codex can teleport around and also do a psionic bomb, which unloads enemy weapons and then has a massive explosion a turn later if you don't run away from it. And the faceless, the faceless goes up to things and hits them, uh, but it's a sort of an area attack uh, effect attack. So you can take out, you can attack multiple things in one go with that with that attack. And then finally, we've got the the viper who can do the um, do the tongue pull, where they grab somebody from across the map and pull them over to them with their with their tongue. Uh, followed by the tactical cuddle, where they squeeze them to death over a, over a turn or so, and also the poison spit, where they can poison any enemies in, the, in, in the, under the area under the area of the effect of that weapon. So uh, I think I should probably um, stop talking about it because there is a timer running up here, and just actually you know get on with the mission. And after a quick restart to get me, the, get me my time back because I spent too long talking, I'm going to start moving forward. So we are in concealment. We've started in concealment at the moment. So that means I'm going to do dashes with all of my troops, try and get forward a, a decent distance, and get a bit of a view on what's going on up the uh, up the um, the end the other end of the world. Now this is one of those missions where you, you have a very harsh timer. I only have four turns, but I can get additional time on the timer by blowing up these little transmitter, uh, these little relay things. So that'll get me some extra time. So there's one there. There's one here. So. We may need to blow up a few of those to try and to keep to keep ourselves with a decent amount of time available. I think I'm going to go through this building over here. Can we do that without smashing a window? Yes, we can. So if we go to there, we'll get a good view over this side as well and see what we've got. And I'm using the sectoids for scouting because they feel relatively um, uh, expendable. So I don't feel too bad about sending them out running out like this. Oh, there's another um, relay over there. But no, no sign of any enemies yet. So that's probably a good thing. I don't know. Uh, run the... Let's... Let's bring the muton up inside the building as well. I think this this could be quite uh, potentially a useful place to start an attack from, from, from depending on what we, what we see on the outside of it. Let's bring the... Did I get the face? Yes, I got the faceless. Run the faceless up on, on the outside. Okay, he's going to go through upstairs. I suppose that's all right. I didn't... Oh dear, he smashed a window. I hope that's not going to... Oh, there's a couple of enemies down there as well. Let's hope that hasn't given us away um, through smashing things. Nope, doesn't seem to have done. Okay, good. So we've got... Mm, okay, they've, they, they, it's hidden them away again. But right, so over here we've got that's a stun lancer, and I saw another health bar over here as well. So there's at least one more advent trooper over there. So having these two in here, let, yeah, let's continue with the attacking from the building because I think that's going to be quite a good way of getting at them. Um, so let's bring my uh, viper up over here. Again, maximum distance, and then finally we'll do the same with the codex. Let's just actually let's just teleport the codex because you know that's the point of a codex. Put them here. Zoop. Zoop. And oh, damn it! Move too far. Okay, well that was a terrible move um, because I've uh, I've reve revealed everyone by moving the codex up far too far forwards. So um, I think I could shoot, but I don't think there's any point. I think a better idea would be to use a psionic bomb here, which will hopefully make these. It'll certainly unload that one's weapon. The stun lancer will still be available to do things, unfortunately. But I think that's probably about the best I can do at this point. So we've disabled their weapons, but the, the stun lancer still has a poking stick, unfortunately. So we're going to have to see what happens at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's the sort of thing I was worried about. That's taken most of the health off the sectoids. That was that was that was unfortunate. And then the uh, that advent trooper is reloaded. Oh, and there's an archon over here and two vipers. Lovely. So I was, I have to admit, I was kind of hoping not to alert them this turn. But okay, if the Archon goes into the middle of the bomb, that's interesting. Oh no, it did take damage. Okay, so that's actually been relatively effective because they didn't leave the psionic bomb. We've actually done more damage to them in their turn um, than they did to my troops. So actually, I'm I, I'm I'm kind of okay with that. Now let's see. So we've got these two two vipers up here. I think I'll probably right. I need to, I, I need to try and focus fire on on one enemy and try and take them down. So let's get let's see. With this one, we've got. 
We've got a really good easy shot on this stun lancer because he's right there. So I think it'd be it'd be foolish not to, not to, not to try and take him out. He's got more health than the trooper up there, but he's going to be a really really easy shot for basically everybody. So let's let this sectoid get revenge like that. Shredded armor as well, nice. Okay, so the stun lancer is down to five health, and now we've got the viper in here who can also also shoot. 87% chance of a hit, four to five damage. We might get the kill out of this one. We might not. Um, I think that's probably worthwhile. Or we could do the ta we could do the um, the tongue pull. The tongue pull will just drag him over here, and then we'd have the um... ah the poison spit. Actually, is a is a blue move. So if we do that, can we do that at the officer? Yeah, we can get the officer out here with that somehow. Not really sure how that. Quite sure how that works. Or we could put it here and hopefully get the archon as well. Yeah, let's do that, and that'll poison this trooper. And the Archon. So the Archon will slowly lose health to that. But because that was a blue move, we've still got the yellow move. And we can and we can shoot this uh, Heavy Lantern and hopefully get another kill. We'll find out. No. Okay, I only did two damage there. Um, fortunately, we have a few more troops available. So let's bring in let's bring in this Sectoid to, I guess, to here. Uh, he's, going to be, he's going to have a, a flanking position on, that, on, the, uh, on the enemy from that. So that's, that's good. Now I've got 87% chance of a, of a hit, so let's let's take that shot. And this will hopefully be yes, there we go. That's the fatality. That's the kill I was looking for. So we next we have the we have the codex, we have the and we have this soldier out here. I think it'd be it's probably worth trying to kill him. So what if if we if we move the codex to here, they would be in good cover, but they'd have a flanking shot on that on that soldier. So let's teleport to there and then shoot the soldier. I think the teleport is something the codex can do every single turn, so they're really, really mobile. Move them to there, and uh, then we've got a 93 percenter on that. That's a very likely to hit. If it hits, it's going to be a kill. So we'll do that. Bang! There we go, and a crit as well. That's a, such a waste of a crit, but but never mind. Now what I'd quite like to do is now the next. My next concern is this archon, which has sort of woken up a bit now. Um, I'd like to move the muton into. Oh, uh, there's still a cloud of, of um, poison out here. I can move the muton to here, which is or here. I want to. I'd like ideally, I'd like to get to, to uh, trick the archon into a, into melee attacking the muton because then the muton will automatically attack back. But I'd also like him to be in in, uh, in cover from the rest of the enemies, particularly the two snakes up here, um, and there's a, and the, on the officer over there. So let's move the muton to here. I could throw a grenade, but I'm not sure there's any point at this at this stage. Um, there's nobody with any armor that needs shredding. There's just this guy. There's just this archon here. So let, let's let's see what, what what's our best shot. We could we could gain ourselves another turn. We've got we've got a little while until we actually need but before turns are going to be a problem. Shoot that one. Yeah. Okay. There's all these guaranteed hits. Then there's a mere 75 on the archon because even though it's a blatantly uh, sitting duck there, out, right out in the open, it's got a defense of 25 percent. So that takes what would otherwise be a hundred percent chance to hit down to down to 75. But it needs killing, so I think, and it's got still got uh, 14 health, so I, there's no point in throwing the grenade at it just yet. So let's take that, and there we go, that's a, that's a nice hit. I'm, I'm happy with that, because, um, you know, I got hit, basically. Uh, and I'd also want to, I'd, li I'd like to get an attack in with the, um, with the faceless. I could move it to here, and from there I could probably get the snake. Um, this goes against my general rule of have I got anyone else? No, my general rule of thumb of trying to attack as many, uh, uh, trying to concentrate fire on one single enemy. But I can't get to the archon, but I can get to the snake. So let's move to here, and then do the claw attack. There is a chance it'll blow up this vehicle, which would be slightly, un which would be somewhat unfortunate. But you know, it's kind of what fa it is, it's, it's playing to the spirit of how faces work. So let's do that. If we if we do blow up the vehicle, then I guess that's going to take out the, the viper. So it's not going to be the end of the world. But hopefully it won't. Nah. Okay, we've, we've taken four damage off the viper. So that's, that's a good start. The archon is poisoned as as uh, hoped for. So it's, that's 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 useful. Um, and now we see what the end. Now we see what the the other aliens do on their turn. He's presumably going to shoot the yeah, shoot the faceless. That was inevitable. The faceless is reasonably tough. It can take a bit of a hit like that. Ah, and just as I hope, because I got the muton in close, I think the archon is going to do a melee attack. Yes, like that. So it did get the hit. Oh, that's disappointing. I was hoping the muton would then automatically strike back again. Um, that's very disappointing. I thought I thought that if you did a melee attack against the muton, it would automatically um, return fire. Um, but seems not. 
Okay, so the Faceless has regenerated four health, but it's lost a health due to the poison. So, I mean, that's overall, that's, um, yeah, it, it just is. So here, what, what what have we got against this archon? We we can do we can fi fire the weapon um, at the at the the archon, please, because that's what I'm curious about. Seventy seven percent chance, uh, so it's yeah, not too bad. Or could use the bayonet. That's a six six to eight, and a but only a fifty five percent chance to hit. So it does more damage. The bayonet does more damage than the than, than shooting does, but is much less likely to hit. So with the with this one, I think. Could I, could I not be quite so zoomed in, please? I need to see how much health he's got left. He's got eight health left. So the bayonet could be a kill, but probably won't. Alternatively, the shooting will almost certainly not be a kill, unless it crits, which it probably... No, there's a 10% chance that's so it. Probably won't happen. But I think it's a more likely hit. So let's go for... I'm going to go for that one. Okay, that's good. So that's six damage. So that's, I think the Archon is now down to two health? Yes, two health. That's frustrating because it's still poisoned, which means if it got, if it took another, um, if, if if it was down to one, then we could ignore it and it would die next turn just all by itself. So let's use this um, already damaged sec sectoid uh, for, for the uh, what will hopefully be the killing blow because this is the the least powerful of my of my troops, I think. So if I move him over here, he's then got a oh, ninety five percent on the on the snake. Oh, that's so tempting because that could easily be a kill, or we might end up with two enemies at approximately no health. Alternatively, we can get 73% on the Archon uh, and a guaranteed kill on hit, or I could bring up, or I could reanimate a zombie. I think let's try and finish off. Let's finish off the Archon because I think that's the most dangerous, and it missed. Great. Um, and then uh, in that case, I guess I'll bring up this sectoid and have exactly the same. I was going to say I have exactly the same dilemma, but no. If I move him to here, he's only going to be able to see the Archon. So that's a, a straight up. Let's just shoot the Archon. Um, and we've got a 72% chance, so hopefully this time he, this time I'll get the hit. Smash the window if you really want, I suppose. There we go. So it, was, it, was, it dodged, but it was just enough to do the damage to take it out. So thanks to the uh, the Muton softening it up first. So we've got the Codex, the Faceless, and the Viper left now. Um, I think I want to keep moving the, uh, the Codex around because that's sort of the point of a Codex. Um, they, 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 they're, they're, they're so mobile that you might as well just jump them around a lot. Also, we might be able to get up close and do something about that, um, about the, the objective. So let's... Ooh, oh, oh, actually... Blah, 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 blah. I was going to say, I should blow up some of these things. I've got two turns left. Let's see, can my, can my snake shoot any of them from here? Uh, yes, actually. So we've got, I've got an enemy snake out there. We're kind of in cover. We could move to here, which is also, which is or here, which is still going to be in cover, um, and then sh and then blow up one of these things. Yeah, I think I need to start blowing those up. Maybe I'll use that. Maybe I'll use the sectoids for that in the next turn because they're not very good shots. So I think oh, we've still got that really tempting 93 percent shot there. Oh, and this is this is a, a kill on a hit. So I think yeah, let's take the kill because it's an easy shot, and then. Oh, but of course the snakes are dodgy. I forgot, I forgot how slippery the snakes can be. Um, so we do have still one more turn before it's an absolute panic on those things. Or I could use the faceless, actually. So we could run him over to here and smack that thing. Or over here and use the codex. How about teleporting the codex to here? Is that cover? Yes, that is cover. And from there it'll easily be able to shoot one of these things. And it'll be in really close distance grabbing distance of the objective there. So we're now we're in a really good position to go in and, and detonate the objective. And that'll get me more points for doing it sooner rather than later. And from here, well, we've got a... Yeah, we've just got straight up easy shots on, on all of these things. It's a shame I only get the one shot with the um, with the codex, but I think it's worth... Yeah, it's going to be worth blowing up a few of these things just to just to give me that, that a bit of extra time, even if I did technically have a flanking flanking position on one of the, other, one of the enemies. Okay, so now let's have another go at killing the snake. Move the uh, uh, faceless over to here and do a, a side attack. Claw attack from there. Claw attack, please. There we go. And hopefully this time we'll actually manage to do the two damage to get that. Nope, just straight up miss it once again. These damn vipers are so hard to hit. And also we're now complete. The, the faces are now a complete sitting duck for the uh, for the officer over there. But we'll. Um, I can't see what's happening. What's what he doing? Okay, the snake is immune to poison, not surprisingly, and is now going to get a flanking shot in on the. Um, oh no, they're taking shots at the um, at the uh, what do you call it? The uh, the codex. That's 
good because the Codex has a lot of health, I suppose. Um, but also because if they... Because can the Codex be poisoned? I don't know. Uh, okay, so the Faceless is again, once again, regenerating all of its health. So that's fantastic. Uh, that's exactly what I need. Um, now, well, <laughs> I want to get to here. Can I just can I just straight up teleport to there? Uh, n n yes, yes, I can. I can teleport to here. Let's do that. And then. Okay, we've alerted another pod. That's not ideal, so I'm still having trouble getting a brief one. And they've got a codex as well. That's going to be fun. And a purifier and a... Is that a trooper? I think it's a trooper. Okay, so we'll place the... Uh, plant the X4, which is, I believe, a free action. Like that. There we go. So we've completed the mission. So we get a load of points for that for doing it relatively early on. And now I need to get my codex into a, into a safe place as much as possible. Because I don't really want them to get killed for, you know, obvious reasons. I think... Moving to here is quite good, I think, uh, because these guys are all quite a long way up round this way. So let's, yeah, let's run to here. So I can't teleport again at this point. And that gets her out of the way, and in, at least in partial cover. Now, let's try and worry about what we've got going on over here. Now we don't have to worry about the main objective anymore. Oh, that's a oh, that's a really easy flanking shot for that snap, for that Viper. That, that might have been a mistake. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's play it reinf for reinforcements. There's there's some there's some corpses around here that I can reanimate. So let's bring this trooper back to life as a uh, as a psi zombie. We then need to try and keep this sectoid safe because if he gets killed, we're going to lose both of our both of those units. But you know, hopefully that this will be okay. So you now you've oh you you've done everything. You're out of action. So that's that's fine. Let's bring you over to here. That puts him in a flanking position for the viper. And we can then, um, uh, and then we can either stab it or uh, shoot it, depending on which gets the better, uh, the better uh, chance of a hit. So from here, we've got yeah, we've got 100, oh, 100 percent chance of shooting. Uh, what about bayoneting? Only an 80 percent chance of the bayonet. Let, let's go, let's go for the shooting because that's a uh, basically guaranteed. That's, that is 100 percent to hit. So even if it dodges, I think it's still going to be a, a fat fatality. There we go. Right, so that's another one of them taken out. And it was a, another another completely wasted crit, but never mind. Uh, it's a dead enemy. That's what's important here. So now over here, I think there's few enough enemies left that if I get the Viper to do a tactical cuddle on this um, on this captain, there's not going to be anything to come out to uh, to save his life. And I think I think the correct way to do this is going to be to move up next to him rather than use the tongue pull and then use the bind and crush. Um, yes, yeah, an adjacent humanoid. So if I just move to move to here. And then we can do bind and crush on that one. It does two to three damage. But I believe that if we hold on to that for a turn now, then it is a guaranteed kill. So uh, that's a good position. That's a good position to be in, given that he, given that he's the last enemy around here. So we don't need to worry about anything else, and we don't need to worry about. Oh no, oh, there's another. Okay, there's another viper, but that's way over here. And hopefully there'll be enough sort of viper solidarity that this one, they won't try and steal each other's meals. That car is about to explode. So I'm not going to send my faceless there. I'll run him over to here instead. And then hopefully he's going to be in a position where he can head over and either attack this this viper down here that, uh, that's by the car by the car that's going to explode. Or he can run over and um, and attack these these enemies over here in, when it becomes that when, when we need to deal with them. So what's left? Um, okay, I've got I've got a, um, a sectoid left who can't really go out of the door because it's because there's poison everywhere and he would, doesn't have enough health to not die from all of that. So I guess moving to okay, so there's a viper the viper up there. Um, I can get to here without being poisoned and that's full cover. So I think that's probably quite a good place to move to. Yeah, let's do that and then see what happens. This sectoid is already not very healthy. But we'll see how things go. There we go. That was the explosion I was hoping for. So now the the uh, viper is down to two. That guy is bound and can't do anything. The viper is going to run away. Immune to poison. Sure, he's gone in, gone and hidden inside. And is shooting at the faceless. Yes. Got a crit. But the faceless heals up so quickly that, to be honest, if he picks up another four health next turn, it's not really going to matter. Um, unless he gets shot again by that uh, codex, of course. I know the codex is shooting at my codex, but has missed. That's good news. The trooper is that a trooper? No, it's a shield bearer. Okay, that's that's annoying because now everything, every, all the enemies are going to be that bit harder to kill. The purifier is miles away. I'm um, probably not going to be able to do anything from there. 
yeah, he's done a double move. Okay, that's 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 fine. So we've regained four health points and and lost one to the poison. So I've gone up by three. So he's still at eleven out of fourteen. That's pretty good. And now, now it's my turn. So what do we have? We have this viper that's just inside, just inside somewhere around here that would be nice to get a kill on. And the faces would be very very good for that if I can get into a position where I can um, actually where I actually know where they are because the faces can basically attack through the wall. Um, the rest of them, I think I need to move the codex away before it gets uh, shot. The sectoid down here, um, we've got a 39% chance of a hit over there. Or a 85% chance of a mind spin. Let's try that, because you never know. The the chance of it actually getting a hit very very low, with a shot are very, very low. But the chance of doing something useful with psionics feels a little bit higher. And it also allows the sectoid to stay back at a reasonably safe distance. So we've got disorientation, uh, but, um, but resist the mind control, um, sure. What's going on over here? Why is he not dead yet? I thought this did... Maybe it just does damage every turn until they finally die. I'm honestly not sure. He seems to still be on um, on 8 health. Let's, let's, let's leave them alone, actually, because I think that at the moment there's not much I can do about that. Now, I probably need to move my um, Muton forwards to, into a position where he can actually do something useful. But I'm not sure what could really be realistically be done over here. We've got their Codex there, the Shield Bearer and Purifier. So they're all in quite defensible positions. I suspect the best answer is going to be get them to come to us. So what if I teleport him? Is there a... Oh, there's some... There's an aerial... Very, very aerial area up here. Uh, could come up here and then I'd have a nice shot down into the street below. Which could be extremely useful against the... Sort of the, the um, uh, defensive bonuses you get from being um, in cover. If I get the if I get the offensive bonus from being really high up, so let's do that. I hadn't even realised there was a an upstairs area over here, which is a little bit dumb. Uh, right, so there we go. Well, there's the uh, there's the um, there's the viper. We can do, we can take a shot against that. Ninety three to hit, which is good. Uh, four to five damage, which is less good because it's got the shield up, so that's not necessarily going to be a kill. Uh, however, if it's not, the faceless can probably finish that one off. Alternatively, we can take a shot at the Purifier, which is only 61%. Let's do this. Let's take out one of these enemies that's been lasting a bit too long. Uh, nice. What's that? Oh, that was a kill. Excellent. That's, that, 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 that's fantastic. That's better than I was hoping for, to be quite honest. Um, now, we've got the, got the Faceless up here. I... I feel like he's not going to be able to attack particularly effectively, or at least I, I, I can move him in and attack, but he's only going to do, he's only going to knock down the shields on these guys. It's not going to do much more than that. Um, and he's going to then be very, very exposed. And even, yes, even though he's got the regenerative health and all that sort of stuff, if you take, if you take, if you take, if, if everybody shoots him, he's still going to be in trouble. Um, so I don't, so I think, yeah, let's move back and go behind this uh, pillar. I think... Whilst they don't really take cover properly, I think at least being behind a pillar like that is going to help a bit. I guess we'll see. And we'll bring the... I, w I want to bring the Muton forward. Yeah, there's some low cover over here. Let's go for that. And this can be our sort of effectively our front line now. So we've got him there. We've got a 51% chance is the best shot here. Or I can throw a grenade at the Purifier. Yeah, let's throw a grenade at the Purifier in order to take out his, um, his armour be quite useful. The shield bearer's got a lot more, but I think the pu <sighs> I don't know, actually. I think maybe the shield bearer is more... Um, no, I think the purifier is more dangerous. So let's do some... Da let's start damaging him, and then maybe somebody else can take a pop shot once his, his uh, cover has been destroyed. There we go. So he's now, he's now suitably exposed, and that means from here we've got a... Uh, not a lot be quite honest with you. Uh, what about you? Have you fired yet? Yes, you have. Oh yeah, you did the psionic nonsense. It didn't really didn't really do anything. Um, if we move you to here, you've got a... Yeah, so here has a shot against the, probably the... I think here... Here has a shot against this this officer over here that the snake is, de is sort of sort of dealing with. Maybe we should... Maybe we should take that, actually. Or could come to here and have a shot against what I believe is the Purifier, but not a very good one, because there's just so much miscellaneous in the way. Let's move to here. It's in cover, even though it doesn't appear to be. And then we can debate what we want to shoot at. So we've got a 40, 45 against the one that's being snake cuddled, or a 38 against the Purifier over there. Those are both pathetic. We could take out another one of these, but I don't think there's any point. Um... We could do a mind spin again. We could try another mind spin on the purifier and see if he see if he's been remotely weakened and see if he see if we can do something a bit more effective this time with a second attack. 
because that has such a better height. Oh uh, no, still still resisted the mind control. Great, so that did nothing. Uh, and I've got my Psy Zombie. Let's run that forwards to to here. Uh, no, they, they don't take cover. Let's, so let's run it forwards to here. And then hopefully it'll be in range of being able to then shamble forwards and punch something in its next turn. I I think I might be going to essentially use this guy mostly as a distraction for them rather than as an actual proper damage dealer, unfortunately. Uh, and since you're standing there, let's destroy this just for the hell of it. I, I don't think... I, I might get points for it. You never know. Let's find out. Nope, didn't get any points for it. Never mind. Okay, so that... That officer is still bound, and therefore it's not having any real effect. The purifier is just... Oh dear, it's doing cyanic bomb. That's not helpful. So that's going to unload the muton's gun, which is really awkward because the muton just shot... Uh, sorry, just threw his grenade, so he now can't do anything apart from stab. And he has to move out of the cyanic bomb area in order to get his... Um, in order to be able to, well, do, do anything, basically. Okay, so the enemies haven't done anything. So using the psionic attacks on that purifier seems to have limited what he's going to um, be able to... What he's going to actually do in his turn. So yes, what I'm saying is the, the muton's gun has now been unloaded by the um, by the psionic bomb, which means he can't do any sort of... He can't do any, any sort of ranged attack, and he has to move out of here this turn in order to not get blown up by the psionic bomb going off. So I could move to here and stab the, um, stab the codex if I wanted with the bayonet, and that would be effective. Um... We'll probably cause the codex to split, but never mind. We're going to need to do that anyway, I think, because we don't have the damage output to kill it in one shot. Um, or I could move to over here and reload and not be able to do any attacks. Or I could... No, I can't come over there. There's not much point in going over there. Yeah, let's let's start attacking the codex. Oh, he was on Overwatch. I did not realise. But it missed, so I guess I'm okay with that. Um, I did not notice him going on Overwatch. So, bayonet attack. 80% chance to hit. That's pretty good. 6 to 8 damage. So that's going to take out his shield and a good chunk of the health, if he, assuming it hits. So let's take that one. And it missed! What? That was an 80% chance to hit. I am um, very, very, very upset. Uh, I'm gonna, So, okay, we're going to have to... Let's, let's see if we can do the same sort of thing with this guy, then. Uh, running over to... Melee attack. No, that's the only thing you can melee. Okay, so the the, the zombie can move. Uh, e e each move counts as a move or an attack. So let's run. Let's run it all the way over to here. In that case, um, that's going to go up over the top. Apparently, sure. Why not? Um, through the train. Shamble, shamble, shamble. I mean, it moves a reasonable distance. It just does that movement incredibly slowly, so it looks ridiculous, and then just falls off on its head. Great. Okay, so we now, we're sort of using it as a mimic beacon at this point. We're, we're, we're happy for the zombie to absorb whatever damage needs to come, wants to come its way. My codex is up there and in a sort of a, an awkward position where it can't really do anything. I think we need to, we need to do some attacking, basically. Um, We've got this purifier down here at half health. I think the pure, I think the codex might be able to kill the purifier. So let's let's jump over to here. That's not as covered as I was hoping actually. Come think, but never mind. He is still in cover. We've now got 100% on that on that um, guy down there. So we'll shoot him. This is a four to five damage. So there's a a good chance for kill. And if not, it makes him. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Boom. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the shot I was going for. So now we're down to basically just having to worry about the codex and the shield bearer, the shield bearer in here. Um, if I move to here, I can attack the shield bearer through the wall. Um, and the codex is probably just going to... Hopefully the codex will carry on just playing silly buggers with the uh, with psionic bombs and things and not do, not do straight up attacks. So let's move the faceless to here, punch the shield bearer through the wall uh, to minimal effect. Maybe we'll demolish the wall enough that somebody else can get in a... Um, we can get in some useful shots on it next turn, um, maybe, but maybe we won't. So, claws through the wall, like that. Do, do some damage. It might take a shield out. There. Oh, and it missed. Oh, okay, it missed, but it destroyed all of the wall around it. So now we have an 89% on the codex, we have a 68 on the uh, on the shield bearer. To be honest, I think the codex is, is going to be the one to go for. It's going to make it... But at this stage, actually, at this stage of the turn, when we just have two sectoids left... Do we really want to split the codex? I don't know. Because th then it's going to get two attacks next turn. But I think it's probably worth it. Um, you've got 
you've not done anything yet either, have you? So you've got what you've got. You've got a 68, 68 on. Okay, that's a 68 and 64. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Fair. So if I, if I move this, if I move this sectoid over to here, then it's still going to have a good shot on the codex, and so is this one. So we can both shoot. We can shoot it twice, and I think that's going to. I think that's going to be quite valuable. So let's do that. Move to here. Now, now let's have a look at the numbers again. So 95 to hit that, 71 to hit that one. Yeah, I'm going to go for the codex, even if it's going to split it. Because we need to do this at some point. So we've done... Yeah, it's done, it's done the clone thing now. One of them's gone up there, sure. We knew that was going to happen. But now we can bring this sectoid over to here. And hopefully, it's going to have enough, be able to do enough damage to this, sect, this codex to kill it in one more shot. No, it did graze. Great. And it's just cloned again. That was not what I was hoping for. Now, because now there's three of the sods out there. Um, <laughs> I think I need to do something about shooting that, um, shooting that uh, viper, sh shooting the, the the captain that the viper's got got um, in the tactical cuddle. Because at the moment we're just wasting the viper. So yeah, we need to do something about that. You're going to shoot the zombie, I think. You're oh no, you're shooting the um, the faceless. Interesting. Uh, you're running over there so you can get back into cover. I mean, that's fairly sensible, really. And, oh dear, the Muton is very nearly dead. That's unfortunate, because the Muton is one of my better damage dealers, I think. You're going to shoot my codex, aren't you? Yes, you are. Uh, on the plus side, it missed. But on the negative side, that means I haven't managed to gain myself an additional codex. So, you know, um, pluses and minuses. What are you doing? Are you going to... You're shooting the faces as well. Okay, this this is where I was saying the faces is tough, but it's not invulnerable. It's, if, it, if it takes too many hits like that, then oh, something died. What died? Oh, the advent officer. So the yes, the tactical cuddle did eventually prove fatal. It was obviously taking three or four damage off the um, off the enemy each turn. So that's actually that's actually really good. We've got now we've got a little bit more, a few more troops available, should we say? So what have, what have the codices done? We've got what? Uh, um, yeah, we've got. Hang on. Yeah, we've got one here. What? That's mine. One here. And I am honestly not sure. Oh, the other one went inside the building, didn't it? It's sort of down. It's, it's in the back here somewhere. Uh, let's send the zombie to go and find it, shall we? Because I'm pretty sure it's in here. So if we move to here, it can then we can then get it get the zombie to do the attack. Yeah, there it is. I was right. I saw I saw it move there. I'm uh, not cheating. <laughs> so now we can do zombie melee attack. It's going to be okay. This is the one that's got most of the health. So we've got 75% chance of hitting. It's not going to be fatal. We're going to have another codec to deal with, but they're all going to have approximately no health left. So, Or alternatively, it'll do another dodge attack, dodged attack, and this is just getting more and more ridiculous. But at least, at least all of these are easy targets now, and I'm going after them in completely the wrong order, and I'm very, very aware of it. So let's bring the... Uh, bring the muton up. I was going to say, bring the muton up here and punt and and, and uh, shoot it because that's going to be a guaranteed hit. But the muton doesn't have the um, doesn't have any ammunition because of the um, the psionic bomb nonsense earlier. Um, that said, I think even so, coming up here and doing a melee attack is going to be my best bet. Um, and then killing this one with my, my my codex is going to be the next next thing to do. So let's come up here uh, and do uh, yeah, let's come up here and do the uh, do the melee attack. And hopefully it'll hit. I mean, these these tend to be about seventy five percent, I think. So it's not brilliant, but eighty percent. It's not brilliant, but I think there's a good chance of it being being a kill. There we go. So now finally we've had a codex not dodge an attack, and we've got the kill out of it. So that's that's excellent. We uh, we, we we really really needed that. Let's leave the snake for the moment, and for now and now we'll have the code my codex teleport over to here. And take the really, really easy shot and just shoot that one right in the face. And even if, it, even if we get a graze, that's probably going to be a kill. So fire weapon from here. 100% chance. Okay, you're down. Good. And then, well, we've got one left there. Um, and I th think... Is that it? Is that it as enemies go? Oh, no. Then, then this shield bearer over here is just causing all kinds of trouble. Um... So if I move to here, then I think I can get I can get an attack with the faceless that'll get the um, get the codex, but not get my zombie. I, I don't really care about the zombie, but I, I might as well try and keep it alive as long as I can because it's mildly useful. It can do it can do sort of attacks that aren't particularly uh, aren't particularly dangerous, but are better than nothing. So we do yeah we do that. Hopefully this is going to be a kill. There we go. Yes, another kill. 
And now there is just this shield bearer left over here. So if I can get my snake to here, um, let's see if we can do a poison spit attack. No, it's, it's out. It's, he's out of range. That's a shame because that would be a good way of dealing with all of his sort of armor and hell, all that sort of stuff. If I can get, if I can get him poisoned, but from here, snake can't do a lot. So let's move up again um, to to here. That's not behind cover, is it? Because the cover was. Oh well, never mind. You have. Uh, you could do another side reanimation and bring back another zombie, but to be quite honest, I think just. Taking a pot shot at this guy, even though it's almost certainly going to miss. No, no. Let's let's uh, let's do a reload. Hang on. What's he? Yeah, yeah. He's got he's got a full turn left. Let's do a. I, I, I can move up to here and where I have a slightly better shot, but I'm not going to be able to get into a flanking position. So it's not going to be it's not going to be great. Let's let's move to here and then go onto Overwatch. I think that's probably my best bet. And then this one, similarly, move up to here. And go on Overwatch. Next turn, if the if the if the if the um, purifier does move, no, not that one. Uh, Overwatch. Uh, if the purifier does move, they're both going to need. To, they're both going to shoot, and then going to, therefore going to need to. Re oh, there was another. I, I forgot about that. That codex. Damn it. So that's probably going to kill my uh, muton now, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's annoying. Um, I kind of need. Oh, I, I'm not going to say needed that guy, but he was would have been very useful. So we did. We taken out the shield bearer shield, which is is useful. Uh, hopefully he's not gonna. Oh, we've got a crit on the uh, on the snake. That's unfortunate. Uh, okay, so we've got we've got the codex up there that we need to we need to deal with. We also have the shield bearer down here, who is now at least weakened. Um, so let's do it. Yeah, we're gonna have to have, have a reload. And then what's the shot gonna be like from down here? Uh, not again. Not that. No, not that. That one. Fifty four percent. It's not great. But I think at this point we need to we need to kill this guy. Okay, so we've taken out the rest of his armor and still done two damage. So that's that's pretty good for a sectoid actually. I'm I'm actually quite pleased with that. This one again, we'll have a reload. And what are your shot chances? Thirty-nine percent, and still not going to be a fatal. That's not brilliant. What can the snake do? Snake can move up to here. They can't get a flanking shot. Uh, could get into cover, which is sort of worthwhile. Yeah, let's get cover, and then we'll see if we can do a. Sp we'll see what the chances are for a, sh a shot, and see what the chances are for a spit attack. Well, a spit attack will be guaranteed, of course. But uh, so 61% if we shoot, or we can poison spit, which will give him yeah damage over time. So every turn, we let's do that, which is that's a guaranteed hit. It's not a lot of damage. Maybe I would. Maybe I'd have been better shooting. I'm not sure, but I think I think that was a worthwhile shot to take anyway. We'll stick this one on Overwatch, and then this zombie. I... We could go after the Codex. I don't think there's the... going after the Codex. I think is going to require somebody with a gun, like another Codex. You know, send a Codex to kill a Codex, as they say. Do they say that? I don't know. Where's a good place to put him? Her. Uh, I think probably here, because we've got full cover, but can shoot both ways. And then we'll try for the shot from here. Oh, there, there, there's the other Codex. Right. So from here, we've got a. 59% chance of a kill. It's not brilliant. We could disarm her though. Let's yeah, let's do that. Let's do the um, psionic bomb. Because that's gonna hopefully. Can you psionic bomb another codex? I don't know. Hopefully it'll disable that, that that codex. Yeah, disable the weapon. So they'll need to spend a turn reloading if they want to have a chance of doing anything useful. Uh, and so we'll send the faceless over this way, partly as a bullet sponge or a plasma sponge or whatever you want to call the weapons. Um, and also partly because that way it's heading towards the enemy that we can then attack. Next turn, I want to use my codex to kill their codex because uh, I've got I've got more health. It should be possible. Uh, we'll do the same with the yeah, the zombie isn't going to be able to attack either. So we'll stay out of the poison cloud, just head over there and, and just generally threaten that enemy. Because if we can if we can leave these two out as really obvious easy targets, it's going to distract him from shooting the sectoids who are a bit more useful, but also a lot more vulnerable. At least that's my hope. So let's see what happens now. That one's teleporting down here. Okay, interesting. That makes you... Oh, we've got another Psionic Bomb coming up for the two sectoids over there. I mean... Oh, no. Psionic Bomb on the guys who are unaffected by having their weapons disabled. That's interesting. Oh, well, we killed the uh, Shield Bearer. Excellent. That was a really good reaction fire. It's obviously got a crit on that one. I approve of that. My Psionic Bomb has gone off to no effect whatsoever. My Faceless now is ready to come over here and attack this Codex. So we'll do that. 
Um, I think if it it's it's gonna if it hits, it's gonna be a guaranteed kill, so that's fine. We'll come over here. We need to, we need to get out the Sonic Bomb anyway if we're gonna spend any decent amount of time down here. Let's do the punch attack, see how things go. And it missed. It missed but did five damage to Wait, what? Oh, I blew up one of the um oh, that must have been one of the uh the transmitter thing, relay things. Um I think my best bet with this, this with my codex is just to move up to here and use the aerial uh, aerial advantage. And f it's a flanking attack anyway from there, as you can see by the yellow icon there. So from here, this is a fire weapon. It's 100%. This is going to be a kill. And that's the last one of the mission, I think. So, Boom, There we go. Phew. That was... That was actually fairly hard, because I think whilst a lot of the aliens are, they're annoying to come up with, they've got all these irritating abilities and things that just do, do irritating things like, um, like empty all your weapons and that sort of thing. They don't actually deal that much damage because they're sort of balanced for using against um, against in, in the single player game. So they have quite low damage output, but a lot but lots of silly um, if, lots of silly special attacks they can do. So using them as your own squad is a little bit weird, and that's why I ended up splitting the codex quite so many times. Is because we just didn't in in single player. Maybe you'll have a a guy with a heavy plasma and um, do blue screen rounds work on codexes? I think they might do. Uh, where you can then just rip through 12, 15 damage in a single in a single shot, and, and if you're lucky, you can kill them with a single with a single shot, or a ranger with a shotgun blast, uh, point blank range, all those sort of things where you can do you can do massive amounts of damage and take them out with a single shot, and it's really really effective. When you're using your mutant who has who can do an up to up to five damage, or your 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 um your sectoids who do a three to five damage with a shot, it's much less effective. So you have to you have to split the uh, codex. Now, I I probably, sh I, when I did, did split it, I should have gone after the weaker ones first, wiped them out, I'd sort of always gone after the weaker enemies, but I had some quite good attacks of opportunity on the, on the healthier ones, which is why we ended up with about four of them. And then at that point, they all had almost no health anyway, so it was a single hit to take each one out. So it became, a, at that point, it actually became reasonably easy to deal with them. I'm sort of disappointed they didn't attack my codex, or at least didn't hit my codex, because having having them doubled into two units would have been quite handy. And if I'd then come out of it with two surviving units from that, maybe I'd have got a higher score here. And maybe before getting that last kill, I should have used my sectoids to bring back some zombies to see if they counted as uninjured units and whether we'd have got more uh, more points from that. But uh, but never mind. I got 23,000 points out of apparently a maximum 34,000. Um, it's not brilliant, it's about two thirds, uh, <laughs> but you know, I think I'll take that. And that was quite an interesting challenge because it was there was a lot more tactical thinking I could do rather than it just being go in and do the poking with, with the uh, chrysalids or do the slashes with the faceless. So yeah, I quite enjoyed that one. That was um, interesting and, 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 and good fun. And uh, being able to use the codex to teleport ahead a bit and, and put down the X4 early on, I think gave me probably a reasonable boost in my points there. So I'm not going to replay this mission because I don't think there's anything I could really have done all that differently to try and um, try and complete it significantly more quickly and therefore with more points. It would just be me going through it with a little bit more foreknowledge of, of what enemies are where and maybe making some slightly better tactical decisions. Perhaps coming out, coming in on that first pod from behind initially and uh, trying and getting the, and maybe getting them killed before we woke up the Archon pod. And that might be possible, but. I think there's not going to be as much interest in, in redoing that as there was with some of the early ones. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please come back and check out all the other stuff on the channel, and, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.